Today we are going to be looking at these three waterproof fountain pen inks and answering the question which fountain pen ink should you get if you want to do some ink and watercolour sketching? If you need a fountain pen that's really waterproof, which ink is best? So we have these three different inks. Sketch ink from a German company. Then we have platinum carbon ink. This is from Japan. And then we have Noodler's Ink, The Heart of Darkness from Noodler, which are an American company. To compare and as our control, we've got Little Chris, which is a lovely water-soluble ink. So we're going to be seeing what happens when we use water-soluble inks, as well as our waterproof inks, just so we can tell, are these waterproof at all, or completely, or are they just the same as using a water-soluble ink? And with that, let's just get started. Now, the first ink I'm going to show you is my carbon ink. This is the ink I use most of all. So let's just test it out first for colour and flow. So if I just use my fountain pen, I'll write carbon ink by platinum. And that will give us a nice little reference for the rest of our tests. Now, the first thing to test the colour that I'm going to do and the flow is really quickly just black in a square like this and try a couple of little bits of hatching. And the first impressions with this ink, and I do know this ink very well, is that it's very dark. It's basically black. If we do a quick line as well, what we'll find is what happens when we quickly, almost immediately, wash that with a bit of water. And you can see immediately it's not dried, has it? It's not waterproof straight away. Well, that's to be expected because all of these inks need time to dry. Now this ink, this is what we call a particle ink. So inside it, there are lots of different blocks of particles, carbon particles, hence the name. And that means as it dries, those particles settle on the surface of the paper and become totally waterproof. Now this is important because particles can block your fountain pen. I've never had a problem with this ink blocking my fountain pen, but I use my fountain pens very regularly. So with particle inks like this one, and like sketch ink, it is important to be aware that you either need to use a fountain pen you don't mind getting damaged or getting blocked, or you need to learn the basic principles of fountain pen care. Moving on, we're going to go to our sketch ink. So sketch ink, as he said, is another um, particle ink. So you do have to be careful or use a pen that you don't mind too much getting damaged. This is sketch ink and it is by Rora and Klingler. Apologies for the terrible pronunciation. And the first thing that you can notice about this ink is it's a little more grey. And as it dries, it actually does lose a fair bit of intensity. The flow is very nice, just like the others. And of course, this isn't a fair test because all the pens I'm using are different. But you can certainly tell that the actual intensity of black is very different between these two inks. Next to our immediate waterproof test, if I do a quick line and then I come back with my brush, what's going to happen? Well, actually, this one is pretty waterproof straight away. And I wasn't expecting that, and I'm I'm actually very pleased to see that. So we can see that straight away, this, this ink, although it's less black than the carbon ink, is pretty much waterproof within a few seconds. Now we can move on to Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Now, this is one of many Noodler's inks, and the Noodler's inks are different. They are chemical inks, and they're designed to react with the cellulose in the paper, meaning that they become permanent through a chemical reaction, not through having particles. Now, this is important because it means, in theory, there's no risk to your fountain pens, or at least no extra risk compared to having a normal ink in there, which can still dry out and block your fountain pen. It's a very black ink, you can see that, and you can get it from the name Heart of Darkness. The flow is also very, well, flowy. So it really, it feels very liquid compared to the others. 
Again, it's not a fully fair comparison, but it feels very liquid um, and comes out very quickly. Now, if we do a quick line and a quick wash, what I'm expecting to happen is that this moves an awful lot. And it does. Of all of these three, it, it definitely moves the most for me. You can almost wash it away completely. And the reason is that, well, two things. Number one, they say the reaction takes time. So this has to be completely dry. And number two, only the ink which touches the paper reacts. So if there's extra ink, that will always wash, no matter how long it's been there. And that has important ramifications for how we use it. Now, the last ink is Little Chris. Now, this is a cheeky test of a, um, a water-soluble ink. So we can just see the difference between all these inks. And this is by Diamine, and it's a kind of lovely blue-black ink. And you can see rather nice and dark, actually a little darker at the moment than these two, but we'll see just how it is when it's finished drying. And if we do a line and then immediately wash it, well, we should be able to basically move that whole line. And you can see this diamond ink is actually an ink which has a really beautiful blue tone when we wash it, when we move it. So there you go. That is the immediate test. The immediate test looking at the flow and the darkness. And hopefully you can see, actually, the darkness of black inks is very, very different. And also the ability to stay put immediately in drying time is very, very different. Now we're going to do a couple of more fun tests. So we're going to test them over a period of one minute, one minute here and five minutes. And we're going to do two things. So firstly, each of these is going to get a block and a line, a block and a line. And then in one minute and five minutes, we're going to come back and put some water on that page and see what happens. Now, basically what that's going to mean is I'm going to have to do my blocks and lines quickly and then come straight back and wash them all. And that will tell us the one minute sort of drying time. And then I'm going to have to wait a few minutes, perhaps go and make a cup of coffee and we'll see the five minute drying time. And if they're still moving, we'll think about doing longer or we'll just say, you know what? You need to be aware these inks take forever to dry if they even dry at all. So last one, little block. The reason for doing the block is it puts much more ink on the page. So it really tells us a lot more about the drying time and also about what the response will be to these inks if there is just excess ink going down on our page. Now, I'm going to guesstimate that that has been about a minute and I'm going to come back with my brush I'm going to wash this line and almost perfect. It just at the very end had a little bit of leak. And here again, pretty good. If I scrub, you can see there's a little bit of discoloration of the page. So it's dried pretty well, but not perfectly. The sketch ink, let's have a look. I'm expecting this to be perfect because of how good this was. And look at it, it is. Even if I scrub, there is no discoloration whatsoever to the page. Coming down to Noodler's ink. Now, this I, I can actually see is still wet here. So I'm going to give it a fair go. I'm going to come on this line first. And look, it's just melting away. Now, that's for two reasons. One, it takes longer to dry. And two, the flow of this ink is much stronger. So it, it feels more liquid. It might partly be the pen, but also I think the ink itself feels more liquid and loose. And so it flows out more there is more there to dry and just look at that i mean not even worth doing was it you can just see it's totally moved and shifted coming down our water soluble ink has actually dried but this is what you expect of water soluble inks that when you re-wet them no matter how long they've been drying you get this same lovely effect and there you go i'm going to wait another few minutes and we'll see what happens with all of these after five minutes and by the magic of video editing, we are back and we are five minutes down the line. So all we need to do now is see what happens when we wet our page. So if we just run our water across the carbon ink, well, look, that's completely dry now. Here you can see as it's dried, a definite leak of ink after one minute, a lot more than it looked like when we just did it. But here, 
that nothing is moving. Here, let's have a look at our sketch ink. Well, why would it be worse than at one minute? And it's not, it's, it's totally perfect. But again, a little gray. It's not really a deep black ink, is it? It's definitely got a gray tinge to it. Coming down, now noodlers, I can see this is still wet. It takes forever to dry. We'll try the line, but look, we can see it's just flowing like mad. Now this is just what I've come to expect from this ink, to be honest. Even being very delicate with a very light line, there is always excess ink on the page. So although you get this permanent mark, you can see a line underneath that is permanent. You also get a lot of ink seeping around. And this, yeah, look, just a total black mark. Um, and then down to our lovely test case, well, it almost, it almost moves less than the, the Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Um, so there's something to think about, isn't it? I would say, look, my favourite ink from all of these remains the carbon ink because it's black. It dries quickly. It remains dark. And I've never had a problem in my fountain pen. My next favourite is the sketch ink. It dries super quickly. It's not quite as punchy. And my style normally requires more of a dark and black mark to contrast the loose watercolours. That said, it is a lovely ink to experiment with and play with. Next, I do enjoy using Noodler's Ink Heart of Darkness. Not because it's very water waterproof in my um, experience or with how I sketch. Rather, I enjoy it because doesn't it produce such lovely effects when it washes? Similarly, these diamond inks are amazing. They're not supposed to be waterproof, but if you're looking for water-soluble inks to have fun with, just look at the textures it produces. If you want to know more about ink and fountain pen sketching, then join my course on sketchloose.co.uk, where I talk in great depth about all things ink and mark making. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.